Hey guys, it's Graham with Tutorial Clarity. Um, I'd like to apologize for not having any lessons up within the past few weeks. I've been busy with some of my music production stuff, as well as starting up college. So yeah, um, I really do apologize for not making any lessons, but, uh, you know, such is life. Such is life. That being said, uh, here's a preview of the effect that we're going to be achieving today. <laughs> I think it's a pretty cool effect, kind of digital looking. I like digital schemes. So, uh, alright, let's go ahead and get started with the composition. As always, I'm going to go to Composition, New Composition, and I'm going to call this composition Title, Composition Name, Main. And I have my duration set to 10 seconds. You're welcome to do whatever. My resolution, just by default, I have it set to half for faster rendering. And uh, hit OK. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a few layers. First things first, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and I'm going to call this one Background. This is going to be my background layer. Make sure it's comp size and hit OK. And uh, now I'm going to do the Particles layer. Layer, New, Solid. I'm going to call this Particles. Comp size, OK. And I know I'm going to have a text layer, so I'm just going to actually take care of this now. I'm going to type in uh, some random text. Frederick Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche. Color this blue. Reason I like blue. Cool color. And align it to the center with the tile action safe. Just get all this in place. And I have it set to small fonts. I don't know why it's called this. It's technically one font. Um, but it's called small fonts over here. It's the font style. So I have that. You're welcome to do whatever you want. It just looks more digital to me. It kind of goes with it. Um, font size, 65 pixels. And uh, yeah, that really takes care of that. I'm actually going to set this to a 3D layer while I'm at it. Because we're going to be rotating and it needs to be able to rotate in 3D space so we can look around it, etc, etc, etc. But on with the layer creation, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Camera. I'm going to call the name camera up here. Uh, depth, depth of field, we're not going to be using any of this stuff. Uh, just use the default settings. I have preset set to 35 millimeter and OK. So if you watch any of my previous tutorials with camera animations, you'll know I always use a null object. So what I'm going to do is go to Layer, New, Null Object. And that just creates this little box here in the center. And I'm going to check the box here to make it 3D. By the way, if you don't see this, if you hit F4 on your keyboard, it toggles those extra options, such as masking or motion blur, making the object a 3D layer or not. And off the bat, what I'm going to do, since I know I'm going to be doing this in the future, is just parenting my camera to my null object for positioning, rotation, once we get down to the animating towards the end of this tutorial. So I'm going to grab the pick whip, drag it to the null layer, of which I'm going to click hit enter on my keyboard and rename it just null. I want it to be called null1. Less confusing. Anyway, you can hide that so you don't have that annoying square in the center. Um, only when we animate later are we going to pull it back up. So, oh, I'm, I'm getting errors. Sorry about that. Windows gave me a uh, <laughs> an error saying that it was detecting that my performance was slow, which is not true, which is very strange. It's actually running pretty smooth. Anyway, um, sorry about that. But yeah, just taking care of the final layer that we're going to have, I'm going to import my audio file. I'm going to right click here and go to import file. And I have it. It's a WAV file. It's just, it was an MP3, but I converted it to a WAV file because After Effects only really deals with WAV files. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Ask the developers. Anyway, I'm going to click and drag it down here to the bottom. And we're not going to touch that for now. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it there. So, I really think that takes care of all of our layers. Um, let's move on. I think I'm actually going to work on the background layer. To get that gradient in there, I'm going to go to Effect, Generate, and Ramp down here at the bottom. Click on that. And that adds a ramp effect to the background layer. Uh, since this is kind of digital, you know, it's completely up to you what colors you use and how it looks. You know, but uh, 
I'm just going to use a dark gray here initially. Dark, dark gray. It's going to fade to a slightly lighter dark gray. Like such. I'm going to hide my particles layer so I can actually see the gradient. That would help. <laughs> anyway, um, do I want this darker at all? Maybe the top a little bit darker. I'm really not changing any other settings in that. It's just a simple gradient for the background. Adds a little bit of color. Makes things flow. But yeah, um, on to the fun part. What I consider to be the fun part. I'm going to actually unhide my particles layer now. And I'm going to click on it. Make sure it's selected. Go to Effect. Trap Code. If you have the Trap Code plugins, I always recommend, the, recommend these. And uh, I'm going to go to Form. We're going to be using Form for this primarily. And initially it pops up by default three planes of particles, because that's what uh, trap code is here. And I'm going to toggle this resolution back to full so it might be a little more clear for you. And first things first, I'm going to go under the base form and make sure your base form is set to box grid. It should be that by default. So I'm going to go to size X and set this to 2500. Very large size X. Size Y, I'm going to go to 1000. Large size Y. And size Z, I'm actually only going to have nothing. <laughs> and for particles and X, I'm going to do 90, tabbing down, 90 for Y as well, and only one for Z. Creates that kind of thin, very thin field of particles. But uh, yeah, that takes care of the base form. Um, believe it or not, we don't have to do anything under the particle. You're welcome to experiment if you'd like to. The self, we're just going to be using the default sphere and uh, sphere feather, etc, etc, size to 1, all these things are default. So with that, I'm actually going to go under the quick maps now. And the opacity map, you know, I think I'm actually going to set this to a mountain. Kind of opacity where it goes up, and then comes down towards the edges. But what I'm going to do for the color map, for the sake of time, is I'm just going to use the blue default. I think I've done this in one of my tutorials before. You're welcome to spend, you know, as much time on colors as you like. But I'm going to map the opacity plus color over radial, I believe. I think here. We're going to have Z, Y. Looks best. Let's just do radial. Do radial. And, uh, all right, that looks fine. That looks fine. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go down to map 1. And I'm going to set this to a mountain as well. I'm going to say map this to the opacity of the particles so that they fade out actually around the edges. I'm going to map this to X. I'm going to do the same thing for map number two. Mountain style opacity here. And I'm going to map it over Y. Actually, opacity here, but I'm going to map it over the Y axis. And you can't really see it, but I believe if I zoom out with my camera, or even my null object, to be honest, you don't have to do this, I'm just showing. You'll see here now that I'm zoomed out towards the edges, it fades out. I don't know if you can notice that or not, but uh, it creates a very subtle fade out of the particle plane. So it's not a hard edge of particles. Keeps things smooth. I'm going to reset the position here. But uh, anyway, going back to our particles layer, um, that takes care of this, believe it or not, for the quick maps. As I said, you're welcome to experiment with the color if you like. This is just what I use. So I think I'm going to go down to the fractal field now. And I'm going to change the effect size to something like 2. Really not much. Just enough diversity in there so things kind of cluster together. And uh, effect opacity. You know, I think I'm going to leave that at 0. Displacement mode. Radial. It's going to be radial as well. And displace itself main aspect here for me at least in this is going to be 80. And uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think that takes care of that. Let's see here. Perhaps XYZ. Radio looks about good. But yeah, I think I'm going to use these settings here. No object. And uh, yeah, I'll keep displace at 80. That's enough for me. You're welcome to mess around if you like. The main aspect here of this effect is getting it in sync with our audio. 